<laughs> Good morning, Pumpkin. What's with the mean mug? Why are you mean mugging me? You got places to go? Got an appointment to get to? This one has been whining and barking for like the last hour and a half, driving me absolutely nuts. But not you, Toby. You're just perfect. Yes, you are, Toby. Hold on. You have to wait. I have to check and make sure the gate's closed. Get back. Get back. No, 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 no. Back. Always have to double check. Make sure those gates are closed with that one. He's a bolter. He jumps out those doors. Had some repair people out here to work on the hot tub. This thing's been broken for a couple of years. It was just leaking. Finally got someone out here who was able to figure out what the problem was. It was just bad pumps that need to be replaced. So that is huge. I'm really excited to get this thing filled up and really cleaned out. That got pretty gross sitting here unused for a couple of years. So I'm going to get on top of that. I won't bother the vlog with that. That seems kind of boring, but that's why the gate was shut, why the dog was barking. All morning, just bark, 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 bark. A very good guard dog, I'll give him that. Okay, you're free. Come on out, buddy. Your wish has come true, buddy. Would you like to come outside? That's what I thought, there you go. He rotates and spins through here so fast. He goes through the brush and everything. It's just like a flash of black fur. He reminds me of the black smoke monster from Lost. Do you remember that thing? Lots of energy. Anyways, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. Pool's finally up and running. Filters going. Hot tubs fit will maybe fix. Let's hope it's fixed. Got to fill it up first and see if it holds water. And it's been sitting around unused for two years, maybe just a little bit under that. So there could be some other problems, but it's a step in the right direction. I have just a few things I want to get done this weekend. Not a ton. I need to get in here to the laurel hedge and put down some fertilizer. I'm going to put some holly tone down. Normally I come in here and try and add some compost and just a little bit of gypsum. I don't think this needs gypsum since it keeps sliding <laughs> gravity. I talked about it in the garden tour that just came out prior to this video. I don't think the soil really needs to be loosened very much. There are other benefits to adding gypsum, but I don't have any for one. And since the mulch is already down, it's not gonna be that easy to get in here with a lot of compost and all that stuff. So I'm just going to lightly pull back the mulch around the plants, put down some holly tone, cover it back up, water them in, that's gonna be it. I have to go unpack the holly tone and all the espoma stuff that I have around. Need to do some pruning over here on the hydrangea trees. Those need to get that cut back like right now, which is fun. I'll get to use the new Falcos. And then I'm going to put some uh, if I have any rose tone, which I'm pretty sure I have a giant bag of rose tone and with my fertilizer stuff in the garage, then I'll give them some of that. No, they're not roses, but it's made for flowering shrubs and that's what those are. So I figure that's a good way to go. And then nice day, Toby. Isn't it a beautiful day? Where's your face? There's your face. I would like to get started with amending the beds too, but it just isn't quite time. Normally I wait until I've started to pull back these mulch piles that are around the bananas or just not there yet. I could, I suppose, go in and do some working in this soil through here, but I don't think I have enough compost to even go. Oh, and I don't have gypsum. We already discussed that. That project's gonna have to wait. Welcome to a video where I just walk around and think out loud. Also known as the same as all of my other vlogs. Nothing unique or special there. I have a whole bunch of kale and cabbage here that I had been overwintering and waiting to use for the spring. I don't think that that survived the cold blast back in February. There's a little bit of life on that one, a little bit on another one, but I'd say these are toast and I would prefer to just go ahead and toss them into the compost. We have a company that I call it the compost, the yard waste. They take that stuff and they put it into a compost. So I would rather just not have it here on the ground. It would be nice to be done with that and have this space cleaned up. And I still have like tons of bird seed over here from where the squirrels got into the bird seed bin. By got in, I mean they chewed their way in and destroyed the storage bin. So I'll only be using metal from now on to store seed. Lesson learned. Oops. Need to remember to get over here some of that holly tone too, don't I? Yeah, the magnolia and the azaleas, they probably appreciate that. Oh, and I need to get the fountains cleaned out. Every year I get asked about how I make this fountain over here. So I will try and make it a point to talk about that, but it's really simple. Like really, really simple. It's just a big bowl with a stand and another pot and a fountain or a pump underneath it with a hose that goes into the drainage hole of that pot. And I put rocks in it. I mean, that's really, that's about it. That's why I've never done a dedicated video on it because it's so simple, but maybe I should because I always get asked about it. I have a bucket here, a little bin with a whole bunch of bones egg gravel in it that I gave a good rinse to need to do some top dressing on some of the bones I out here. And maybe, hopefully, if I can get around to it, 
I'd like to do some flower arrangements, maybe a hanging basket for springtime. That might be kind of fun. I don't know if I'm gonna get to that though. That might be a video that comes out after this one. It's Cause I gotta remember to do the important things first. Cause there was some, oh, I need to plant the ginger rhizome and I need to tend to my other ginger rhizomes and probably the caladiums too. I think it's about time to get those put up. Yay, Toby. Look at you getting your aqua aerobics in. Good boy, Toby. Yes, makes sense to shake the water off while you're still in the pool. Let me back up. That was good. Okay, all right, good boy. Don't get me wet. Good boy. Yeah. There you go. Good boy. Do not get me wet. This is first time in the pool this year. Good boy. Good boy, Tobes. Yeah, I'm so happy for you. It's a whopping 63 degrees, so I don't blame him. It's so toasty out here. <laughs> My guess would be he was like, I want to get in there. And then he put a couple paws in and he was like, well... I've already committed because I took a step in and then probably felt that water and went, mm, you know what, let's make this short because that water is only 55 degrees. I need to get this bed cleaned up too. It's probably time to actually go ahead and start doing the work, right? Instead of just walking around and talking about it. It's part of my process. I like to go through and it sort of think out loud here on the cameras. I need to start with the, what, what are we gonna do? Holly tone fertilizer? That sounds like fun. <laughs> it is so foggy in here from the humidifiers the humidifiers that are over here i don't know is it going to show on camera can you see the haze the cloud that flows out of here when i open the door i think i'm going to maybe move the orange bird of paradise out because it's just sitting over here not getting much light i think that it would appreciate being outside even if there's some cool nights it'll probably be happier out there with brighter intense lights than sitting in here just like slowly dying no it's not dying it's perfectly fine a lot of this stuff is from last year so that's not a big deal there we go holly tone so what i've done here is i came through and just made a little trench a really small one with my hand that is roughly below the drip line of the shrub i don't think i went out quite far enough but this is it's fine this should be good get a nice big scoop here of the fertilizer and just sprinkle that on through gonna do that all the way around and then i'll come through where i've sprinkled it cover that back up and then I'll water them in. I might skip watering them in just because it's supposed to start raining here pretty soon and then it's gonna keep raining for a few days. So I think that that might be a little bit redundant and unnecessary. The nice thing about the organic continuous release fertilizers, these are pretty slow to get into effect. It takes them a while to start the breakdown process. So it's not like there's going to be immediate results from getting this underneath the shrub. It's just going to help enrich the soil and provide lots of beneficial stuff for the roots of the plant to help get the plant moving. What are you doing? What are you doing? See, and that's why I'm burying this. You can take the polytone or jobs, whatever you're using. There's nothing wrong with just spreading that on top of the mulch and then watering it in. But it's because of the dog who's currently peeing on the shrub. It's because of the dogs. They like to make sure it's buried because it attracts them. They like to dig around and munch it up. So I don't want to, I don't want to have to deal with that. It's not likely to hurt them, but still I would just rather they didn't because the fertilizer is for the plants, not the dogs. Soil amendment fertilizer. Not the same as adding compost, but not too far from it. It helps liven up that soil quite a bit. Buddy, you on the lookout? He's always on patrol. Yeah, see here, I really could have taken that circle out probably to about right there. So I did go in a little bit far, but it should be fine. I'm not that worried. Once I'm done with this entire row here, I can come in and sprinkle some more. That's not going to hurt anything. Only gonna help build nice soil, nice rich soil for the plants to use. Oh, I don't know if I mentioned using hollow tone specifically because it's for evergreens and azaleas and the skip oils they're evergreens but if i didn't have any on hand i would be perfectly happy using plant tone or garden tone just any type of organic continuous or slow release fertilizer that's going to help enrich the soil and liven things up and the reason that i'm not too concerned about not being able to come in here and compost things like i have done in years past or at the gypsum is because the mulch that i had put down is a really nice, heavily blended, finely shredded, well, kind of, not as finely shredded as they told me it was, but it's good enough. It's a compost mulch. So that on its own is gonna break down and do a similar thing to what would happen if I were to add my own compost down here. There's not as much to it because it's just mulch. And when I add compost in here, there's generally earthworm castings and mushroom and all that fun stuff. But this is still, it's good. This is plenty. I haven't had many issues with the soil here on this berm, but it is important to keep richening, richening it, living it up because it is a berm. And so there's generally a constant flush of 
going through here when it rains really heavily or it's like we go through a dry spell. Whatever the case, nutrients and things can flush out of this very quickly. So as far as my entire garden is concerned, this is the area where I usually spend the most time adding amendments and it's not even like I spend that much time doing it. It's pretty minimal. Like a couple times a year and it doesn't take very long. You go for a dip too? Oh, they're so happy. So nice being out here with the doggies. Yeah, I'm gonna finish that up. Wanted to get that done before these flowers started to move too far on the shrubs. I, it would probably be fine no matter what because it's, I'm not using a heavy fertilizer. It's the nice thing about using the organic slow release fertilizers is they're pretty gentle. It's not just a blast of nutrient right to the plant. It's something that has to slowly break down. We've talked, we, you know what I'm saying. Oh, and I should mention, if you're not concerned about a dog getting in and getting into the fertilizer, just spread it in a circle. It's a lot easier. You can put it right on top of the mulch and just gently work it in my preferred way to do it, but because of the dogs, I have to go through and bury it a little bit more heavily than this. But this is what most, this is what's easier and what most normal people do. Another wonderful option for enriching the soil, kelp meal and earthworm castings works wonderfully. Anything that can get in there and help liven it up and enrich it, give all the microbes down there something to feast on, works wonderfully. Okay, so that's pretty much done. I still need to come in here and work a little bit more of that in. There's some areas in here that are harder to get to. I'll use a little rake to get in there and do that. Sometimes I'll just use the hose and like blast the fertilizer, the soil amendment down in there further. But since it's supposed to start raining here and then keep raining for maybe a couple of days, that just seems like a waste of water, right? Okay, and now something I've been waiting to do. I need to test out these falcos and print up the hydrangea trees. Also the alyssum. Smells so good. I can smell it all the way from the other side of the yard. It's very faint, but I can smell it. The one thing I mentioned in the last vlog that I'm not crazy about here, hopefully this is all in focus, uh, the catch on this, really, really hard to move. Looks like I might be able to take a flathead and loosen that up. I might give that a shot. The paniculatas have just started to flush out. Oh, these are greasy. These are really greasy. I should attempt to show you what I'm talking about here. It'd be easier if I could close these up. See these little bumps on the stem there? Just little bitty green bumps. That's how I know it's time to go ahead and give these a prune. Right when those start to flush out is when it's a good time to come in and give things a cut. That didn't cut through this little branch as easily as I would have hoped it would have. So along with just cutting everything back, I'll cut everything back sometimes by up to two thirds, which is extreme. Usually I just do half, but this year I'm going heavier, which I talked about in the garden tour. I really want to get some better branching out of this. I would like for them to be more full this year. Any of these branches like this one, it's really hard to see, but it's wonky. That's got to go. Another wonky one right here. That's got to go. This whole thing up here, really weird and twisty. Can you see it? Hopefully. I don't know. The sun's in my eyes. It's got to go. That'll do. A really nice heavy prune. I went ahead and got the other one done that's down on the other side of those steps too. Still plenty of green inside of them. They should be just fine. I do, however, hold on, using a new tripod here and I keep moving the wrong switch to adjust things. I need to get in here and get this all cleaned out. Lots of leaves that fall down and collect from the fall. It's mostly oak, which takes longer to break down, especially if you don't shred it up. I want to make sure to get most of that out of there so it doesn't get waterlogged. Wow, this really sank down. Look at how much of a lip there is here. Gravity did its thing with this container. I don't want to add any more soil in here because I, that's gonna rot things out. And I haven't fully decided if I'm going to keep these hydrangeas in these pots. They've been in them for a few years, they're perennials. I think they would appreciate being moved into the landscape. So I'm not going to worry about lifting this out and adding more soil right now. But I do need to make sure to get something put in here to help get this plant moving since I just did that heavy cut back. Oh, and look there, we're talking about the drip line where the fertilizer is supposed to go. It's right there on the bag. Good to know. One and a half tablespoons per quart is a cubic foot. Okay, so truth be told with potted plants, I tend to just go ahead and do it. I think generally the gist of it is you don't need to go too heavy. We'll work that in. That should be good. Now, I had thought in years past the bag said to put it around the edge of the pot and it was a little bit more precise, but maybe I'm thinking of a different brand. Doesn't matter, it's done, that's good. Less is more, because I didn't really feel like measuring it. You know, with potted plants, especially potted perennials, it is important to go in and make sure that things stay nice and enriched because every time they get watered, all those nutrients get flushed out. Well, not all of them. Over time, with lots of water, <laughs> the nutrients get flushed out faster than they, than they would if they were in the ground. And I will add earthworm castings and some of that kelp meal into this also. I'm gonna hold off and let that rose tone do its thing. The other stuff 
it needs to warm up and I think it needs to warm up somewhat for this stuff to get going too. Within a few weeks, that should become more active and have an effect on the plant. And I really went pretty light there. Honestly, I usually would have done a little bit more than that, but I thought, okay, I'll just take it easy. Because this is in, I don't wanna say a fresh mix, but it got potted up last year. Whereas this one right here got potted up like four or five years ago. Really needs to be repotted. That's why I was saying that I think it's time to just go ahead and get these out into the landscaping because it this needs to be bumped up into a larger pot, right? Like that's, it's not gonna be very healthy in there for much longer. Without doing like a lot of root pruning and it's essentially turning into a giant bonsai, which I don't feel like doing, it's not going to be at its best. I don't want two of these giant gray pots lining the steps. I don't think that I would like the way that that would look. I prefer these smaller blue pots or even some urns or something like that or nothing at all even but not those great big giant gray pots. Since I don't have anything larger to move this up into that's why I'm saying I should probably just move out into the landscape right? They would be better off that way. Oh I found a bungee cord. Can't imagine where that came from. I'll put that away. Anyways what I was getting at is that with this one since it's been potted up longer makes more sense to go in a smidge heavier with the amendments. But potting soil over time, the more it breaks down, the more organics you introduce into it, starts to clump up and retain water. Since it's been a few years, since this has had any fresh mix in it, the soil is, I mean, I can already see here, you can kind of look at it. It's starting to get more of a, not quite a muddy texture, like it still looks pretty good, but it's more down there at the bottom that I get concerned where the soil really starts to hold on too much water and then start to have problems with rot. I know this from experience because that's what happened to the hydrangea tree that used to be in here. The roots came out the bottom, it got clogged up and just wasn't draining and did my best, didn't survive. It was also because it was during a time where we just had like tons and tons and tons of rain and it really drowned that poor thing out. Okay, your turn, here we go. I'll slightly work that in. Okay, that's good enough for now. <laughs> Clean this up. Oh, look at all these fun hydrangea flowers. If I were feeling more crafty, I would save these, tie them up, hang them up somewhere so that they don't get any like animal traffic in the house on them. Maybe use them for a fall wreath or spray paint them. People spray paint these hydrangea heads and put them into vases. They look really pretty. That does sound like a fun project, doesn't it? I don't know. I'm not going to toss those into the compost just yet. I'll hold on to them, see if I get a wild hair and decide that I feel like spray painting some hydrangea flowers. I would also normally do the rose tone on the honeysuckles, but I need to get these dug up. I'm probably going to wait a week or so to do that because the spot that they need to go into isn't quite ready. So it wouldn't really make sense to go ahead and fertilize them and then dig them up. It'd probably be better to let them stay chill and then replant them and use a starter fertilizer on them to help them get rooted in. And then next year, be sure to get in there with that rose tone. I could probably do the starter fertilizer and just a little bit of the rose tone. Honeysuckle are pretty tough. Kind of just depends on when they're being transplanted. But I almost forgot about the oleander. For this, I went ahead and did something a little bit differently than what I usually do. I figured just because I have so much of the rose tone and not anywhere near as much of the holly tone that I would do about a 50-50 split. I did rose tone in here and then maybe a half of the dose, pardon the there's children outside playing. And then about half the dose of the holly tone. Holly tone's great for acid loving plants. I already mentioned that, right? Oleanders are acid loving plants. So I wanted to make sure to get some of that in there. But the rose tone's made for woody shrubs that bloom. So I thought just mix it up and see what happens. And then I'm going to go through and top dress it with some organic compost garden soil, which technically you really shouldn't use with potted plants. But I've done this for a couple years, specifically with this oleander and it's done really, really well since I started doing that. It kind of goes back to what I was saying with that hydrangea tree. Because it's all organic, have to watch out for clumping, have to watch out for the drainage and make sure that things don't get too clumped up and clogged up. Just don't want too much water retention. And you can see it was just a little. I only put a little bit in there. I really like this soil blend. I wouldn't use it just straight as a potty mix. Like I said, it is technically made for garden soil but it just has a really good composition to it. It has so much nutrient, earthworm castings and the mushrooms and lots of good stuff in there, but made for the ground, not for pots. That's why I just use just a little bit, just a teeny tiny to be a little baby bit. Okay, moving on. I do have other plants that I did the holly tone and some other things with, but I think you get it. I've done enough of that, right? I guess just to cover things, I made sure to use that holly tone in with my akubas, my magnolias, my azaleas, my rhododendrons, dendrums, rhododendrons, de like, ugh, the rhododendrons, and the fatsias, any of the acid loving evergreens. Now, I have some gingers here. I, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't help the screaming. 
try and face my mic the other way. My friend sent these to me and I unboxed them in last weekend's vlog. These are Hedicium garden. These are Hedicium gardeniums. Oh my God. I accidentally broke it in half. Gingers like to be planted shallow. This isn't permanent. This is just to get it started. You can see these green nubs here. Those are the eyes. They've started to move. So we know that this wants to get planted. I don't want to leave this out and let it dry out. So I just put this in a shallow container. That's what gingers like. Preferably something nice and wide if you're going to keep them in the container. This would not be a good solution or a good way to do this if they were going to stay in these containers permanently. But this is just to give them what they want, which is some soil, some water, and some warmth. So I'm just going to barely cover the tops of these. And then in a couple weeks when the ground has warmed up enough, I'll move them into the ground. That's enough of that. I'm so sorry about the noise. I would wait and do this later, but like I said, there's supposed to be a lot of storms rolling in. And I'm just about out of time to be able to film the video, so it's all right. We're outside, just going with the flow. It's okay. Okay, things quieted down a little bit. I have a video that I've been working on with gingers. It'll be out in a few weeks where I'll talk more extensively about planting them. Essentially, eyes up, don't want too much soil on top. They like a nice wide bowl. If you're going to be keeping them in something like permanent, not like I'm doing where it's just for a couple of weeks, and it's a good idea to get that rhizome closer to one of the edges because they like to crawl. If you pot it in the middle, it's gonna probably crawl to one side. Then you'll end up having a bunch of bare space on one end and then they start to get more crammed over here than over there. Overall, it ends up just looking somewhat messy and untidy. By having it in that spot, you give them more time to spread and do their thing. Doing this in a pot because it's like kind of risky to put these out into the ground right now. I wanna wait till the ground temperatures have warmed up like a lot but at least another 10 degrees. It's probably about 55, I would guess, would be the ground temperatures right now because I don't want these to rot. So this way I can just take this, move it in and out as necessary, just in case we have a cold snap, which we're going to. It looks like there's still some nights in the upper 30s coming up here. And the Hedicheums, they can take that. And there's different varieties, but most of them can handle that. But since this is just a rhizome, it's not a growing plant, it's going to be more prone to rotting if it's really wet and it's going to be dropping down that cool. I don't think that that's going to be a problem. Seems unlikely. This is a just to be safe scenario. It's also why I have it here in a hanging basket. So I have tons of extra hanging baskets and it just makes it easier to move it around if I need to. Really, it's all just various ways and hacks to be extra lazy. Okay, next up, caladiums. These, uh, I'm a little bit concerned about them. They got pretty dry. Like, I don't know how much life, I mean, that's still kind of firm. Not as firm as I would like. You can see these got dug up and packed up really last minute in the fall and I didn't put them in with any moist vermiculite, which is a risky thing to do. Normally I would wait another month or so until probably late April to early May where I live to start potting up the caladiums, but I'm pretty sure if I were to do that with these, they would die. That's what I'm thinking. It looks like there's some green on there, so that's good. That's a good sign. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put these in a hanging basket. Let me see if I can find one. I'm gonna do this just like I was with that ginger. See, broken pot, it's fine. This is just temporary. It's an all-purpose potting mix. It's actually a coconut-based one, so it should dry really well. Normally, I would come in here and try and remove a bunch of the soil from these, but really, I just wanna get them into some sort of soil that can hold some moisture. My concern with these is that they're pretty brittle because they've started to dry out. So I don't want to go in and start tearing at that root mass and potentially destroying what, like, what little viable life there might be inside of those bulbs. And then just like with the gingers, I'm only going to put a little bit on top. I'm just barely covering these. What the heck? Um, why is there a french fry in my potting soil? That's weird. Oh, you know what? It was probably in the box. I used the box to carry the potting soil over here to get that mix over here. I had the box popped open on my kitchen table and my guess would be someone was probably throwing fries around to the dogs, which I wish they wouldn't do because I have a no people food rule, but not everybody respects that. The way I typically start caladiums isn't really like this. When I get my caladiums going, I've done it in videos before, I'll take a flat tray, the kind you set like seedling packs in or you just carry your plants around in, a plastic one, make sure there's holes in the bottom for drainage, and I'll scatter a very light layer of soil, like just a little bit of soil on the surface of that tray. The trays are usually about a couple inches high, maybe three inches. And then I'll go ahead and lay all my caladiums out and then I'll just barely cover them give them a water, and then once they've put out about two leaves, I go through and separate them out. The reason I do that is because having a shallow soil layer helps prevent the risk of rot. When you're starting these inside, 
that risk of them running out is just a lot higher. They like heat. They prefer a warmer soil in a warmer situation. So if things are cool and damp, they're more likely to rot. But if it's a shallow layer of soil, then it, that's more likely to dry out more quickly. So while I do have to make sure to stay on top of keeping the blend just a little bit moist, it seems to be better in the long run. Now, if I'm starting them outside, then I'll just go through it and plop them where they need to go. But again, just like with the gingers, just not quite that time of year yet. But I like the idea of having this in this basket because again the handle so I can move it around for when we have those cold snaps there should be some cold nights coming up and I can take them and set them on the sunny part of the patio where it's going to get nice and warm to help get those going and help hopefully bring them back to life. These are the frog in a blender caladiums. They have really pretty variegated mottled foliage on them. Okay I think we're good. I think that I like panic rushed my way through the majority of everything that like absolutely needed to be done right now which is great. That's a relief. Oh and this was pre-moistened. I'm going to watch that forecast for another like hour or so. If it's not going to rain, then I'll very lightly sprinkle some water on this and on that ginger that I just potted up. Idea here is that the sun's going to help keep these nice and toasty and get them going, pardon the dog. Like the one time of year where the plants in the pots are probably gonna be warmer than the plants in the ground. Cause even in the fall when the air cools off, the ground's still nice and toasty. But right now, not so much, still pretty cool. But the sun is very strong. So these will be nice and warm during the day. And then if it starts to get too cold, I'll just grab those handles and pull them in just to be safe. Like I said, the ginger, not as concerned about the caladiums. Those are gonna be much more likely to rot. And on that note, where did I put the soil? Oh, I used the rest of the soil. So the soil blend that I use is Coke Bop. It's a coconut based soil from Fox Farms. It isn't, the most ideal to use for something like this because it has a lot of organics in it. This is one of the few scenarios where I would prefer to use something that's pretty barren of nutrient, like ferty loam. Not a lot going on in there. It's just peat and perlite, not much else. I don't think there's anything else in just their standard mix. It's basically like you're growing them hydroponically. You have to feed the nutrient to the plant because there isn't anything mixed in there with it. Or miracle Grow, same difference. It's gonna be peat perlite and then uh, some slow release fertilizer that may or may not be any good. You, you don't really know. But the Coke Bop has a bunch of really great stuff in it for growing plants, but there are also things that are going to feed bacteria and fungus and things you don't really want when we're trying to avoid rot, right? That's another reason I kept these planted very shallow, really, really shallow, so that hopefully won't be an issue. You better stop, buddy. You're being a little bite. He's full, but I took him on a walk we did the whole walking thing, like two miles still, lots of barking. Everything in sight, he has to bark at and let me know that it's there. It's not even me, he doesn't care about me, that's not what it is. That's just Buddy, that's what Buddies do. The rain didn't happen, so I went through and spent some time watering. I have a really bad habit in the garden that I have got to stop. This is going to be the year I'm going to nick this problem in the bud. Knit this problem in the bud? Don't think that's how that saying goes. Where I look at the forecast, it says it's going to rain, so I don't water, and then it doesn't rain. That happens here a lot. And then there are plenty of occasions where they say that it's gonna be bright and sunny, and then it rains. Up until a few years ago, I'd never paid attention to that. I'd just be like, oh, well, it doesn't matter. Part of my morning routine is water. And then like something happened over the last few years where I was like, well, if it says it's gonna rain, where would I water? It's just laziness, and, and I don't wanna waste water either. But it's mostly those poppies that I was concerned about, those little poppy seedlings. It was, that wasn't super hot today. Maybe it got up to 70, if even. But you know, poppy seedlings, all seedlings, really delicate and tender. So if that soil were to dry out, then those would all be gone out of absolutely nowhere. I think I got to those just in time. There was something of oh, the yard waste. That's why I was walking over here. I need to go ahead and gather all this stuff up because that's getting picked up tonight. I decided that while it sounds like it'd be so much fun to do a craft with these, I'm probably not going to like this gotta be realistic with myself. I'm never gonna get around to that. So there's no reason to keep these around. What you looking at, Toby? Is there someone out there? You got a special delivery, Toby? That's not for you, that's for me. I was debating moving out the bird of paradise and then the tree fern. I think that the weather right now would be okay to bring both of those out. April's still gonna be unpredictable, but it's just a couple of plants. So if there is a cold snap, it's not gonna be super cold. It would be unusual for it to dip below like 28. It could happen, but it would be unusual. And I could throw those down onto the ground with some frost cloth, because it would probably only be for like a night if that were to happen. But there's just part of me that's like, just wait, give it a couple days, keep watching the forecast, because it's at the end of the 10 day forecast where it's showing the lows. I'm like, all right, if I were to see those in the middle of the week, that'd be one thing, but I don't know what's going to come after those 
days, right? So I'm going to keep an eye on that and wait to make that decision what I want to do there. I think that wraps it up for tonight or for today. Not the whole video. I need to do more. I feel like I didn't do enough, although I did a lot. I spent like three hours out here just fertilizing. I know it didn't seem like that in the video because it's all edited together, but I mean, I did a lot of fertilizing. I probably should have dug up those honeysuckles. I want to do that while the ground's still cool. I just, I don't know. I really didn't feel like it. That's all there was to it. The spot where it's going to go, it's really hard to get to right now. I just didn't want to. You thirsty, Colby? You getting some water? Okay, little camera shy, I'll leave you alone. Since I was doing the caladium stuff out there, I remember that I had another box of caladium bulbs, more of the frog in a blenders, and I think the other one's called White Christmas, has big white leaves on it. I realized that I should give those a check. I try and check them at the end of every single month or the beginning of the month somewhere in there, roughly every 30 days. I do that with all my bulbs and whatnots, just to make sure nothing's rotting or too desiccated. And they were pretty dry. Some of them, like, I don't know if they're going to make it. So what I'm going to do here is pretty much what I described before. I already put them in this colander and gave them a rinse just to get some water onto them because I was like, hey, these are gonna die like now. I don't have any seedling trays, which I mentioned before, that's what I typically would use for something like this. So I have a little, what? it's not a Tupperware, whatever this is, a food container that I pop some holes in the bottom of. This will work fine, especially because I don't have a lid for it. So didn't really have much of a use for it as it was. I'm going to go ahead and put these in there and just put a very, very light layer of soil on top of them. And I'll probably put this in a baggie to help hold some moisture in. Is that squishy? No, it's not squishy. Just barely enough soil to cover the top. And I don't, hopefully you saw it. I didn't point it out. I did put some really, really rough holes in the bottom enough so that water will be able to drain out. The main thing I want to avoid here is rot. Clidium bulbs rot very easily, really fast if they don't have some warmth around them. If it's cool and wet, no, kiss of death. Slide this here into this baggie, seal it up and set it someplace warm until, what, can I help you? I know, I heard it. There's a dog outside barking, I know. What is the, why, calm down. As I was saying, I'm gonna set this someplace warm. So for me, that's going to be on top of the refrigerator. It's just a little bit warm. It's not super warm up here. Should be enough though to get these started. And then as soon as there's some green on them, I'm going to have to move them so that they can get some light. I may give them like a day, maybe two. And then uh, if they don't look like there's a, enough moisture in there, then I can give them a little sprinkle of water. Not something I need to rush to do because I already know that the bulbs are moist and so is that soil. I prefer it wasn't that way, but that's how it all worked out. Oh gosh, love this orchid. It's so pretty. The flowers have been slightly changing color. They were more of a pale, like whitish pink. And now they're really starting to show off more of this like lavender hue. And they are fragrant. So uh, I had somebody ask me that. I posted a picture of this on Instagram. I didn't notice any fragrance the first day that it was open, but this morning they smelled very nice, really sweet. And in other exciting news, look at that. Finally, some action from the artichokes. Took like, what, almost two weeks? Which it really isn't that bad. It's looking like we got some action coming out of almost every single cell in here. Back to rows here. These are all green globe and I'm seeing something come out of all of them. It looks like I overpacked that cell somewhat. And then how many, looks like there's just a few. So waiting on one here from the Colorado star, not seeing any action in there. But three of those are up and going. Same thing here with the, what are these? The Tavor artichokes, missing one and then uh, the violet. The violet has been the slowest to get moving. I'm only getting stuff at, well, I think that's a little, is that something? There might be something going on there. I don't, don't want to mess with it too much. Looks like there might be some green there. I'll leave it. There's just barely something starting to go there. So they're starting. They're just taking their time. Something going on with all of the Imperial stars. So far, it looks like the Imperial star and the green globes are the most vigorous, or at least the quickest to get going. Heck, some of these green globes are like almost skipping <laughs> their seed leaves and just going straight out with some nice big ones. I mean, that's their first set. So those were technically their seed leaves, but you can see what I'm talking about, right? They don't look like typical seedling leaves. They're a little bit more 
elongated, nice and sturdy too. I'm going to leave that humidity dome on there for a little bit longer until I see some more growth out of here. If I had to guess like maybe three or four more days, something along the lines of that. This is, it looks like there are still like three cells in there that have some seeds that are just getting ready to get going. So I'm gonna let that be for right now. Then I'll get that off of there and start watering them up. I'll use the self wicking mat for like maybe a few weeks on these just to get them going. But after that, I, I'm gonna be able to take these outside. I could probably take them out in just a couple of weeks, I would think. Been trying to get a good shot of all the detail here inside the lip, but it's just, it's too dark. I can't get in there with the camera. Doesn't really want to focus. I mean, that's a decent shot. Maybe it'll look nice up on a screen through my camera. It's pretty dark and blurry. I just love where the colors fade. That's always my favorite thing when colors blend together. It's right where they meet and like all that fun stuff happens. You know, like on a rainbow snow cone when all the colors start to meet up and that's that's my favorite color. It's the color blends on rainbow snow cones. Don't know how we got there. Is it raining? I can't tell. Like every time I get the camera out and I think that it's a good time to come. Nope, it's definitely raining under the umbrella. I feel like I've got a bunch done today. I've been thinking about coming over here and trimming up the stuff on that rostrata just because I like the way the trunks look. And as the new growth on top of that flushes out, it'll put down a new layer of it. That's really good to have for winter protection, but I think I talked about this and I did. I talked about it in the garden tour. I'm not leaving these outside <laughs> anymore. It hasn't been working out well. They're not looking good. There are people in the St. Louis area who have them outside all year round, but they're in the ground and they're just so expensive and hard to come by. Like I waited my entire life to get my hands on these. Like no joke. I got them, what, two or three years ago and I was ecstatic about it. I was always able to find little ones, but I don't have the patience for that. I wanted something that already had some trunk on it and I had tried the little ones in the ground and it's just, I, but the yard was too wet for it. You know, I mix my soils and amend my beds to hold on to some moisture, like to drain freely, but still hold on to something, which really isn't ideal for those plants. So if I were to ever set up a like dry area, you know, something to xyriscape, it would be a great option, but I don't have that. So pots it is, that's where those are staying. I also just remembered I need to get some alfalfa pellets. I forgot to mention that when I was doing the berm down there see right above my fingers you were here you saw it with the compost and all stuff i was talking about alfalfa pellets especially with the banana trees you give them a little soak in some water and work those into the top of the soil and really just scatter them on top of the soil i like to work them in just a smidge great source of nitrogen for the plants it smells kind of farmy but that's okay loving the spring getting some rain which is good it was supposed to just rain and rain and rain and instead it's just this often on mist. So it's a good thing that I did end up watering because the plants would have been absolutely miserable if I hadn't. Looks like there's gonna be some really bad storms down in Alabama. The front shifted down there. And if everybody down there is okay. Talking about a lot of tornadoes, it's that time of year. Which also reminds me, I need to change the batteries in my weather radio thingy. I have an app on my phone, but just to be safe, I have a backup weather radio in the bedroom just in case. My paranoia with spring is always just nighttime tornadoes and not waking up and then just, you know, everything blowing away. That's scary. I don't like thinking about that. I don't really know why I came out here. I, well, I thought it wasn't raining. I was gonna walk around and talk about some things, but here we are, lots of mist. It's looking like it's probably going to stay that way. Look at her, she's so precious. Pumpkin, you so precious. Such a perfect pumpkin. I saw a video where somebody was playing sounds on their phone to attract their cats and I had to do it. And I gotta say it worked, but she seemed really bothered by it, so I won't be doing it again. I don't like to do things that stress my pets out. It was just cats meowing, but playing it on the phone, it got her attention. She came flying in, she was looking around and kept looking at me. She's like, what is that? What's going on? Do you hear that? Her and her little murder mittens were like, I can't find it, but when I do, I'm gonna kill it. I mean, thanks for hanging out while I ran around and <laughs> got as many things done as I could before the bad weather rolled in. It's the first step of many things to come. I'm starting to get the soil livened up, get things prepped to plant, doing some cleanup. Oh, I got almost all those kales and cabbages thrown into the compost yesterday. But there was one survivor. There's no reason to keep it other than I just thought it was cute. You can take them and split them off and go ahead and replant those stems when they start to bolt. I don't see a reason to do that. Even if it does take root, it's not like it's going to do well because it's, by the time it does root out and starts to recover, it's gonna be warm out and it's not gonna be a happy plant. But I thought it was cute enough to save just for a few days, put it in there. Oh, and who remembers a couple weeks ago, maybe three or four weeks ago, I was walking outside and I was like, something smells like death out here, it just reeks. 
That, this should have been obvious, that's the smell of rotting cabbage. Lots of rotting cabbage on the patio. Makes sense when you think about it. I just hadn't put those pieces together. It's good to have those done or put away or not put away. What did I do? Toss that into the compost. So I'll be hanging out inside here for the next few days while the rain passes. It looks like it's going to be bright and sunny for a good week after this, which isn't necessarily ideal. It would be nice if we could get like a couple days of rain a week during the spring, you know, for it to spread out more evenly instead of being like, okay, it's going to be dry for 10 days and then rain for a week. Cause you know, the flooding and everything, it gets pretty bad, but any rain is good. I'll take it. Next week's going to be nice and sunny. It does look like there's going to be some lows. They changed the 38 and 39 lows to 35 and 34, at least for my area. So I'm going to hold off on moving any more plants out just to be safe. There's no reason to rush it. Figure a couple more weeks in the grow space isn't going to hurt anything. Like I am itching. I want to get them out there, but there's more than enough to do out here. There's so much cleanup to get done before I even need to worry about bringing the plants out. This cat layer smells so freaking good. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life. Everything's going wonderfully for you. Comment down below. I love talking to everybody. Fun spring things starting to happening. We're just like at that point where we're just sort of waiting it out and it's gonna get warm here pretty soon. Oh, and I found one of my wishlist orchids today. I've like had a Google alert thing set up Someone was offering it on eBay and I snatched that thing up. It's one I've wanted for a long time. It's a BC North or Miami. I know TD Moore, who does lots of orchid stuff on YouTube, he got one and showed it on Instagram the other day and I was like, oh, it's so beautiful. And then just a few days later, one showed up available. I am so excited for that to come in the mail. I've changed how I'm doing things with orchids now. I'm only getting ones that I really, really, really want like ones that I'm going to be really excited about having, so I won't have as many, but I'll be more in love with the ones that I have. Does that make sense? And what's nice about that is that it frees up the orchid budget to go ahead and just get the ones that maybe cost a little bit more. Because if I end up only getting like one or two a year, since the my wish list is pretty short these days with the orchids, I've grown a lot. So, it, you know, when you've been doing plant things for a while, it takes something that's just a little bit extra special to really strike your interest. Anyways, that's enough rambling. I'm really excited about this new orchid that's coming in the mail. Hopefully it'll be here next week. I don't know if it'll be here in time for the vlog. Y'all will see it. I don't know if anybody cares, but I'm really excited about it. And that's how I know I've made a good decision with the plant is when I'm really excited for it to show up in the mail. Those become fewer and farther between. Like I was saying, when you've been seeing the plants for so many years, it's like, oh, that's pretty, but like, does it spark joy? Not necessarily. Okay, shutting up now, battery's dying. I have no choice. I forgot to put the moss back on top of the Gloriosum. So it's just been sitting here like a hat on top of the bell that has the Melanochrysum and the Lindelani in it. I don't hate it. It's kind of funny. I should stick some googly eyes on there. I mean, that would kind of ruin the aesthetic, but I don't know what the aesthetic is. It's I have too many plants and my window's overflowing. That's my aesthetic. And smiley face sponges. Gotta have those around. All right. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.